In the last video, we dove right into building our Movie Database API, with the intention of building a quote-unquote bad API on purpose that we can then incrementally improve using the concepts of REST and Hypermedia. If you skip the intro, you can download all the example code for this tutorial from my GitHub page at github.com slash jasonroads slash hypermedia dash tutorial. I also explained in the last video that we'll be using code from different branches at different points throughout the tutorial, and that I would make a point to make sure everyone knows where we are along the way. Right now, we're staying on the branch 1-RPC, where we've just added a little bit of extra code to the index file, which you can see here in my editor. We started with just these four lines, we added a line where we started a movies database using NEDB, and then we used Express to define just an example test route, just to make sure the API is working so that we can use the browser, because we're using a GET request, or responding to a GET request I should say, we can use a browser to test this API and make sure that it's working. So now we're, we're listening on port 3000, let's just one more time make sure our API is still working. So back in the browser, let's just go back to localhost on port 3000, and we still have our API is working message. So now we can start building our RPC style API. And to do that, we're going to have to be able to respond to post requests and not just get requests, which means our browser isn't going to be much good to us. So I'm actually going to use something in Chrome called Postman. It's an app that runs in Chrome. So if you're using Chrome uh, or if you want to download Chrome, you can also get the Postman app. So Postman allows us to make requests of any kind of HTTP type and see the results in a really nicely formatted way. So for instance, if we want to just make a GET request, and we can make it to, we already have it uh, programmed in here, localhost 3000, we can see that we're getting back just a regular text response called the API is working. And if I look at the headers, we can see we had some headers back. We'll go into these a little more later. Uh, we got a status message back, how long it took, and we can even add this to our collection. So if we add to a collection, we've already got hypermedia RPC here, and this is just get root, and we'll add to the collection. So this is a great app that we'll be using throughout the course of this tutorial to test our API and make sure it's giving us the responses that we expect. As I've been saying, we're building an RPC style API. It's not terribly important that you understand what RPC means, but you should just understand that for our purposes, what it will mean is that all requests will come in post requests and that all the information will be stored in the body of that request. So nothing in the headers, nothing in get variables, there's no get requests at all. Everything is through post and all the data is in the body. So obviously we need to listen for a post request. So we're going to use the express post method. And we'll pick one endpoint for all of these posts, because it doesn't matter. There's not going to be any information in that endpoint or in that URL. It's all going to be stored in the body. So we'll just say slash RPC. Add our callback, or again, we have our request and our response. And we need to get the body of the request out of the request object, since that's where all the data is. So we'll say our body equals request.body, and that should give us access to that object. The only problem is Express right now doesn't know how to read in that request object and parse it into the right format. So we do two extra things to make that work. First, we tell Express to use its body parser. So we say app.use and we pull in the Express body parser and that will tell it to go ahead and parse the body and convert it into the right format. So let's figure out exactly how we're going to respond to these requests. First of all, we're going to expect that they set an action key on the body. So we will say, while we're making a bad API, let's go ahead and make Doug Crockford mad and use a switch statement. We'll switch on body.action. In the case where they say get movies, we'll just respond by saying getting movies. Also put a default case where we just say no action given so that we get some feedback if we don't get to the get movies. We're making a little mistake here with our switch statement that's going to bite us is to make sure you say break there. So now we've got our break statement. And just to show you what's actually happening, if we were to go to the browser and try to go to our new endpoint at our slash RPC, it's going to tell us we can't get RPC because we've only set up a post request. So that's all we're listening for. So gets are not allowed. 
So if we switch to Postman, and instead of a GET request, we make a POST request to slash RPC. And we're going to make some JSON here. So we're going to do ACTION, and we'll do GET MOVIES. That looks like everything that we expect in our API. All we've expected so far is an ACTION key, and we want it to say GET MOVIES, and then we'll return GETTING MOVIES. We just have to add one header so that Express knows how to convert this JSON into an object on the other side. So we have to tell it that the content type is JSON. So we say application slash JSON, and now Express will know exactly how to convert that. So if we preview this request, we see we're posting to RPC, we've set our content type header, and we've got JSON in the body, which is the only place we're allowed to put data about our request. So we've told it the action that we want to do is get movies. If we send that request, we get back the response. So if you're following along, hopefully you're getting this exact response. So now let's connect our get movies endpoint to our database. The way we'll do that is we're going to do, use the NEDB's function find, which takes a query object and then a callback to pass the results to. If the query object is empty, it's going to just return all the results it can find. So if we had thousands of movies in our database, this would probably be a bad idea, but for this purpose, we're fine. So our callback will get an error object if an error occurred, or an array of results. So what we want to do is, if there was an error, we'll send that back. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and send the results back. And there's one problem here. If this result set is an array, we can't just send it back. We need to send back a string. So we'll use the JSON stringify function to go ahead and just turn this into a JSON string. And we'll do the same thing with the error. Since we've converted everything to JSON, at the top of our request, we might as well just use the response object to set our content type header. So we'll use response.set, we'll say content type, and we'll set it to application JSON. So now we can get rid of this getting movies text response. We can test this out. So if we resend our same exact request, we don't have to make any changes to it. We now get back an empty array. Uh, this doesn't seem very exciting, but it actually is because this is exactly what we expect. There are no movies in the database yet, and so we have an empty array. If there was a problem, we would have gotten one of those error messages back in the response body. So our tiny little API just needs two more routes. We need to be able to add a movie and to rate a movie, which will just be an update. Before we do that, let's just go ahead and refactor this really quickly so that we don't have to keep writing it over and over. Up at the top of our post request. So now, right here, all I have to do is say respond. And we'll just change the default one as well. And now we're ready to go ahead and try one of those other routes. So we'll make a new case here. And we'll say add movie. And here we're going to do an insert, as you might guess. So it's very simple to do an insert using any DB. You're just going to use a JavaScript object here. So we'll set the title of our movie, and we're just going to expect that in the post body, they've set a title key, and then we will respond. So if there is a result that comes back from that saying, you know, good job, if any DB sends that back, we'll just JSON stringify it and send it right back. And any error that comes out of the database is just going to get sent right back as well. And let's go ahead and test this in Postman. So we never have to change the endpoint. Everything goes the same to the same endpoint. And we never have to change this content type because we're always going to be sending JSON. So all we're going to do is change the body. So for action, we're going to say add movie. And then we need a title. So if we preview our request, it's going to look almost exactly the same as our other request. And if we send the request, we get back a representation of the, our new movie. We get rid of the title here. We're going to add it to our collection as add a movie. And then in get list of movies, so if we send our get movies action again, we now have the movie we just added. So this is working both on the posting, it's saving to the database, and it's reading from the database. Let's add one more movie. We'll send this. We get back our long string ID with the title. Get our list of movies and send that. And now we have two. 
The last thing we want to be able to do is rate a movie. So we'll add one more case here. Rate movie. And here we're going to say db.movies.update. And we're going to expect that you pass the title of the movie. Now, it's probably better to request the ID, but uh, we're just going to go with title for now. NEDB has an interesting syntax here. So we're going to use what uh, a REST person would call a patch. NEDB lets us do this by saying set. So by using the dollar set, we have an object here, and it's just going to append the rating property onto uh, the existing object. You might think we would do respond here. We, we don't want to do that exactly because all that this is going to return is the number of records updated. So just to make this a little bit nicer, we're going to go ahead and set the callback where we'll just take our respond function, we'll pass along the error if there was one, and otherwise we'll pass an object, we'll call it success, and we'll say there were that many records updated. Make sure we do our break statement here. Let's rate Star Wars. So here's the name of the movie. Our action now is going to be rate movie. And the title, the rating, and we'll say it's 5. If we send this, we get back our little success JSON object. It says success, one records updated. If we go back to getting our list of movies and send that, you can see that Star Wars has a rating, whereas Indiana Jones does not. So that makes up a pretty good example of a very non-restful API. You can see that we could easily add a delete movie case here. We could do adding descriptions, adding directors and actors. Uh, even if we wanted to do some sort of rental service, you could extend this as far as you want. But I think it's pretty easy to see that quickly you're going to have a couple things going wrong. It's going to get really messy in here. So this switch statement, if you choose to continue using switch, or even if you broke this out into something better than a switch statement, it's still going to be everything all dumped in on top of each other inside of one route. And that can get crowded and messy, and it's not really a great way to keep things separate. The second problem is for your API users. There's right now no way for someone to tell what the heck is going on with your API just by using it. They would have to read through an entire set of documentation or notes or details or just read through the code to see what kinds of endpoints are available. But then they have to read through and guess what all of those actions are. So maybe you'd want to have a place where you could define each of those actions. And sooner or later, you're going through a lot of trouble to do exactly what REST is going to give you kind of for free if you set things up the REST way. So in the next video, we'll take a look at how we can convert this RPC style or non-RESTful API into a level one REST API where we begin to use resources or nouns to separate out our actions.